Hey everyone, Brooks for Digital Cloud Training. Have you heard of ElectroLeak? It is a crypto mining operation that the Palo Alto Networks Unit 42 team discovered. It's quite a little operation. Here's the basic idea. What these hackers were able to do is detect credentials, that is things like username, passwords, that have been inadvertently put into source code or really anything that is pushed into public GitHub repos. What made it so devastating? They were able to detect it in some cases within five to 10 minutes of the credentials being exposed. That is really fast. In fact, I'm gonna give you a direct quote from one of the researchers here. They were able to at one point detect in a space of just over a month between August 30th and October 6th of 2023, 474 different miners in operation. In fact, their exact quote on this one was this, we believe that the actor might be able to find exposed AWS keys that aren't automatically detected by AWS and subsequently control these keys outside of the AWS compromised key quarantine policy. If you're not familiar with that policy, it's a very slick policy that AWS manages. They will put on your account if they detect that a particular key you're using has been exposed or compromised. It's a great way that AWS helps to protect us as their customers from this exact sort of thing happening with Electrolyte. Now, if you're not familiar with it exactly what that means, let me take you through a little demonstration. I've got some source code I'm going to show you where I've put some credentials that aren't supposed to be exposed. However, I made a small mistake and put them in there. Then I'm going to go into GitHub, enable these features, and then we're going to try to push this code up to where Electrolyte could actually find it, and you're going to see it get stopped. But first, the source code. In this case, I have a detect ICPU script. Awesome script for detecting crypto mining. And I've got on lines six and seven, right here that you see, some credentials. Now, these are not valid. Don't bother pausing this video and trying to write these down so you can jump into my account. It's not gonna work. But from the looks of it, from the feel of it, from the way it's set up, these are very much indicative of what we'd expect for AWS keys. And this happens more often than what we really want to admit. Sometimes we're following a tutorial from someone trying to learn about how to code in AWS. Maybe we've uh, just in a rush put these credentials in the file to make sure is our code actually working. And then we forget about it and it gets pushed. And then we have the exposure if it's a public repo in GitHub. Now, let me show you how you can stop this from being exposed, or at least help stop it from getting exposed using GitHub's secret scanning. In your GitHub account, it's under settings, but I want you to notice, first of all, I'm in my bad juju directory, a bad repo to demonstrate bad things. And notice there are no files. In just a moment, I will try to take that file and push it into this repo, and we'll see if secret scannings can stop it. But first, let's verify that I've got secret scannings actually enabled. The way you do it is simply this. In the top right, select your icon and then settings. Once on the settings page, on the left-hand menu, scroll down to security and choose code security and analysis. Scroll to the bottom of that page, and that's where the magic lives, secret scanning and push protection. When you enable secret scanning, it's going to be applied to any new repos that you create that are public. That's awesome. Turn on that feature. It's really the second feature that I like the best, though. With push protection, it's going to block commits that contain supported secrets. Basically, GitHub has done an awesome job of trying to figure out what does a secret look like, and not just a secret for AWS. It could be something used in Azure, something you've used in Google. Maybe it's something that you're using on-premise, like a username password to get into a database. All those things have a look and feel to them, and GitHub has done a really good job of trying to put together the sort of pattern matching needed to detect them. In this case, I've got both of these features turned on. So what I'm gonna do now is jump into my terminal and actually try to push that file into my bad juju network. I'm here in my terminal and it's set up to push to the bad juju repo. So let's take a look at our files. There's detect high CPU, awesome. Let's add that in. Let's give it a little message because we got to give it a message. Exposing secrets. Whoa. Ah, ah, ah. There we go. Now I'm going to do git push. And git push is really where the action happens. At this point, if you're not familiar, I'm doing this for anyone who's not familiar with git. Nothing has really happened. I've just sort of staged that file to be pushed to GitHub. It's this next command, git push, that will actually try to take the file and push it up to GitHub. Let's run that command and see what happens. So I'm set to go, git push, hit enter. Bam, we get an error message. And this is the error right here. 
Normally, if everything had worked, you'd get this here, maybe one or two more lines, and then it would be completely finished. In this case, GitHub push protection kicked in. Notice what it says, Amazon AWS access key ID. That is awesome. What that means is this, the GitHub secret scanning system just didn't find something that, oh, that looks like that could be something. It could actually figure out, okay, wait a minute, I think that's an AWS credential. And then look what it does on the very next couple of lines. It actually comes in here and gets us pretty close, I think it's one line off, to where the actual secret was put in the file. In this case, five and six. Really, really nicely done. So at this point, you would know that you've accidentally put secrets into your code. Now, let's go to GitHub and make sure that file didn't actually get pushed. So I'm back in Bad Juju. I'll do a refresh. And if everything worked, yep, the file is not there. That's it. We put on two checkboxes. Now, if I try to push credentials accidentally into a public repo, GitHub is going to help us from stopping that from happening. Are there cases where you could accidentally still do it? Yeah, I can see an edge case where that can happen. But for the most part, for my own research, it's done a really good job of detecting secrets. So I recommend if you're an individual, absolutely go in and turn on those two features today. If you're part of an organization that's using GitHub for source code or part of your code repository, or as part of a CI CD pipeline, maybe with Git Actions, GitHub Actions, pardon me, go in there and turn on those two features. Now, let me make this as concrete as I can. I mentioned earlier that the researchers found 474 mining operations. Let's bring that down and make it very concrete. These miners with Electroleak have been using an EC2 instance type of a C5A.24 extra large. This thing runs right around, I believe the last time I checked, $3.69 an hour in on demand. And by the way, the hackers are not going to try to take care of, you know, use reserve pricing or spot instance. They're just going to grab on demand. If they spun up 10 of those EC2 instances in your account, ran them for seven days, you're looking at a bill of just over $6,000 for that crypto mining operation. That is horrible. By the way, if that does happen to you and you have one of the higher support uh, systems like business or enterprise from AWS, reach out to your TAM, let them know what happened. In fact, they may be reaching out to you before that to let you know that they detected what appears to be coin mining going on in your organizational account. AWS can do that. It's pretty awesome. However, for those of us who don't have that, for those of us who just want to try to get ahead of it, highly recommend turn on secret scanning inside your GitHub account today. Thanks for watching.